Danish Icelandic history more than any other place uh, in Iceland. But let me also take this opportunity to congratulate the festival for having uh, established uh, not only so strong roots for us here, here in Reykjavik to become one of the uh, regular cultural events that we look forward to, but also to have succeeded in building bridges to the community of uh, filmmakers and also journalists and experts and others uh, who take an interest in how we use this medium to understand ourselves better and perhaps, uh, perhaps to change the world. Uh, finally, the world of movie making has discovered that Iceland is in fact a huge, uh, huge movie set. Is it our, our son <laughs> Dear Susan, <laughs> finally you're here, even though it's just for one night stand. <laughs> <laughs> the festival asked me to voice a greeting for Icelandic filmmakers. I do not know exactly how to do that, but we have known each other for many years. And I especially remember when you and I started our travel around the world with our early works. You have been a great inspiration for Icelandic filmmakers, particularly since you have shown the world that you don't need to make expensive films to touch the audience and to be true to your vision at the same time. They say women are almost exclusively objects of male desire in films and always preferably naked. <laughs> but it is the director who does the real striptease. <laughs> <laughs> After a premiere, the director stands naked before the audience and it's the opposite of Emperor's new clothes. You have stripped down to nothing again and again with great success. <laughs> <laughs> Most movies these days are designed with a single purpose of killing time. I'm not sure that people who go out of their way to kill time deserve time. <laughs> or they deserve living. Huh? <laughs> Dear Susan, welcome to this godforsaken country. <laughs> As Nick Nixon put it. <laughs> 